Hello everyone, thanks for joining us. We have a saying here at the Wayward Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. We know that God is ready to do something amazing in your life, so check out today's service. You know, today we're going to be talking about some great, we're going to be talking about how to win every battle in your life. And, and, and I've learned that life is full of battles and, and life doesn't get easier. We're going to have to learn how to fight and learn how to live a winning lifestyle. You know, when Jesus came, he said that the devil is, or the thief is out to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come to give you life in abundance. And what he was doing was talking about the war that we're in, wow. that there's actually a thief that wants to rip our marriages off, rip us off of our joy, our peace. He, he's there to kill, steal, and destroy. That means he's there to defeat us, yeah. but then he says, you don't have to live that defeated lifestyle because I've come to give you an abundant lifestyle a winning lifestyle. So we're going to learn how to do that. And fighting is a skill that you got to learn. Right. And if you're going to be really good at winning in life, we're going to need to learn some keys on winning in spiritual battles. And, and those are the toughest battles of all. But before we get into that, um, I just want to remind you, we have the marriage advance coming up. Or, and, and this is going to be at the Hyatt Regency in Anaheim. It's going to be awesome. Um, married couples, there's only 20 spots left. Um, Joel Johnson with his wife are coming out. They're going to be amazing. I'm going to be speaking as well. If, if you can make it, you got to, there's 20 spots, I would reserve my spot. And then, um, not this week, but next week, we have our women's conference or women's advance. You don't want to miss that. Ladies, um, you could do both. I mean, have your husband go to the, to the marriage advance, but you go to the women's conference. So that's going to be on Friday and Saturday. So our Fire Fridays, not this week, but the week after that, will be our women's advance. So we're not going to have a regular Fire Fridays. It's going to be just women's only. So I would advise you, sign up. It's open registration. We got more than enough room. So we'd love for you, for you to um, just come and join us. So before we get started, let's go ahead and pray as we get into this work. Can you lead us in prayer? Yes. Talk. Uh, Father God, we, just, uh, we need you tonight. We need you to move in a powerful way. There's a word that you have that someone is waiting to hear. Someone is ready to win a battle that they have been in for years. And they're going to they're gonna get victory tonight in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we pray that you speak to us and speak through us. That as we deliver this word, Father, that hearts and minds are open and receptive to what you have to say tonight. Father, we love you and we worship you and we adore you. We are believing for, for breakthroughs and, and, and battles to be won in the name of Jesus. Awesome. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, we have Pastor Todd with us tonight. He's, yeah. he's, he's one of my friends for a really long time. And yeah. then yeah. God spoke to him. How'd you end up in our church, by the way? Man, amazing, man. I, I have my own church, of course, you know, for about 13 years or, or a little bit more than that. And uh, it was amazing. We were going through some transitions. Uh, but I, I kind of was, was struggling at times with, man, am I going to keep this going or not? And God says, no, you got people that you got to shepherd. And you just keep shepherding them. And so we went through some challenges. Uh, but once I settled in my spirit that God, I'm going to take care of these people. I think we went, or my, my, my congregation, we went through about eight months of kind of restoration uh, through some challenges that we went through. And it was amazing. As soon as I said, you know what, I'm in this for the long haul. I don't know, one morning I woke up and, and God spoke to me and he said, you're getting ready to transition. And I'm like, uh, where am I going and, and how? <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, I woke up that, that afternoon, I was, came out of my study. Lord told me, you know what, I want you to go down to the Wayward Outreach Hallmark campus. And I just showed up down here on a Thursday and I just kind of walked around. I didn't even know what I was doing here really. I just kind of like followed God's direction. Ended up here and, and kind of walked around and met, uh, I, the first person I met was Victor Munoz. I kind of was walking down, he found me, he's like, man, what are you doing here? I, I don't know, I'm just here. Right. Uh, God told me to come. And uh, he kind of gave me a nice little tour. I think I left a message for you to call me. You called me back the next day. Mm -hmm. And that kind of put things in motion. We talked and God was like, you know, I don't know what he's doing, but I know I'm here and I don't know what the reason is. And we kind of discovered yeah. that, right. which, which led me here now in 2016. Uh, my, my church, uh, many of my members are here. Yes. My wife, our family, we're on board now with the Wayward Outreach. And so we've been here now for about, what, five years? Wow. More than five years. That long. 2016. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and it's, it's how God works. He, yeah. he gives you instructions and, 
and when we learn how to just follow those instructions and yeah. we don't have to get, God doesn't always show you the whole picture. Yes. It, it takes one step, step at, a at a time and that's called a walk of faith. Yes. So today we're going to be talking about how to win every battle. Yes. So God has put this word on your heart and really what is this going to be about today? Well, this, this uh, uh, message is about uh, a word that God gave uh, to, to Moses. And then Moses delivered this word and Joshua and Caleb received the word. And then they moved on the word. And this word that God gave to Joshua and Caleb through Moses is also available to us. And so we're going to give you three keys on how to win every battle from this scripture, this passage of scripture that God used uh, to get people out of a place of bondage into a land of promise. Yeah, these, these people that we're going to be talking about that actually win this battle, um, they never were ever and they were never trained warriors. They were actually slaves for over 400 years. Yes. All they knew was slavery. And now God delivered them from Pharaoh through yes. Moses. And a lot of us have you know, hear, heard the story, we've even seen the movie where he parts the Red Sea and all the Pharaoh's army is destroyed in one moment. And this, these are the people that God gave a promise yes. that they would finally have a home. Yes. They never had their own home. They never had their property. They never had even wealth or any money to have. They, they were always just living yeah. uh, really as beggars yes. and as slaves. They would eat the leftovers. That's where they were living. Yes. And now God says, I'm not only going to deliver you from where you've been living yes. and how you've been living, but I'm going to deliver you into an abundant life. Yes. So that's the battle is going from where you're at to this life that God has for you because there's a lot of things that will try to stop you from enjoying that victory, enjoying that walk with God. So we're going to give you three keys tonight that if you get these keys, you can face every single battle or struggle that you're in. And I don't know what battle you're struggling in. You know, one of the battles that we, I've been struggling with, and you know, it's my mom, you know, when I lost my mom, she was my like right hand person. She was my best friend besides my wife. And I would talk to her every single day. And, and that was a loss. And, and that was a battle. Yeah. How do I come back from that and be effective? Yes. For some of us, you might be going through a sickness today and you're thinking, man, I'm overwhelmed by these symptoms. How do I overcome that? Or maybe you're depressed or full of anxiety or struggling with an addiction. I don't know what your battle is. Or, or maybe you just need a word from God. Yeah. Like I'm confused. I really don't know what my future's, my future's lo looking like. I don't know what decision I need to make. But whatever battle you're mm. in, God has a victory for you. Yes. God will never put you in a battle with, with, with losing in mind. Mm. He always puts you in a battle with victory in mind. And he's taking you from one level to the next. But this is what he's saying. Fight the fight of faith. That means we got to learn how to fight. So we're going to get three keys to overcome and, and win in every single battle in your life. So let's, let's start off with key number one. Well, key number one is, is the, I believe, the most important word to every battle. Key number one is you got to get a word from God. Get a word from God. For every battle we are in, there is a specific word or promise that you have to stand on. So you got to get a word from God, and then you got to stand on that word. The scripture that supports that God gave, I want you to understand this, God gave Moses a word, or in other words, a promise. Right. So when you're going through it, when you're getting ready to go through a battle, God is going to first give you a word, and then you're going to have to stand on that word. There's a scripture here in uh, Numbers 13, 1 and verse 2. It says, the Lord now said to Moses, send out, he says what? Send out men to explore the land of Canaan, the land that I am giving to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the 12 ancestral tribes. So it's amazing because not only Joshua and Caleb got this message or this word from Moses, from the Lord, but there were 10 other tribes that got the same word. Right. But as, we are, as you're going to see that only Joshua and Caleb actually received the word, okay. believed the word, and then followed that word. So now Moses gets a word from God and he shares it with the whole congregation of Israel. I mean... <laughs> There's millions of people. Yes. He's sharing the word. Yes. And then he, he breaks it down to really 12 leaders. And part of these, there's two leaders that really stand out, yeah. Joshua and Caleb, because they got results that no, no one else got, got That's right. in the whole Israel. Yes. These guys actually won a victory. Yes. They saw the promise come to pass. And if they're the only ones that saw the promise come to pass, it makes me think, well, what did they do differently? Hmm. Yes. And what they did differently 
is what we do differently when we start getting wins or victories. Do you know just because God's speaking to the whole congregation doesn't mean that everyone that's listening is going to get results. Only those that receive the word personally get results. Even though we're speaking to the whole Israel, right. Joshua and Caleb look at it a little bit different. This is what they do. They said, this word that I'm hearing today is for me. And until you get that word and receive that word, even though the word is powerful and it has promises of victory, mm -hmm. unless you personally say, yes. that's my word, you'll never ever see a victory in a word you never received or claimed. That's why when we're at church, we say this, amen. Hmm. You know what that means? Let that be in my life. Or you're also saying, I receive that. Is there anybody receiving a word of victory? Huh. Well, God spoke yes. to Moses. I'm receiving that for me today. Amen. So that's one of the keys is getting a word. That's, a, that's, a, that's the first key right. uh, to moving into a promise that God has for you. But it's amazing about that word because God gave the same word to Joshua. Now, understand this. He got that word, but it was not until 40 years later that that word was actually began to come to pass. Wow. So God gave Moses a word for Joshua and Caleb and the other, other tribes. But, it, but what? It was the same word that God gave him again 40 years later that he stood on. Right. He reminded him of the word that he gave him. And so just because it don't happen, whenever God gives you a word, just because it doesn't happen right away, don't abandon the word that God gave you. Stand on the word. I, it might be 30 years, 40 years. But what I believe that God is doing right now, God is literally doing a quick work in people's lives. Right. I don't think they're having to wait 30 and 40 years. I, we're seeing people get saved turning to God, and God is transforming their lives and their families in months, weeks, yeah. even days. That, but yeah. you get a word from God, and you stand on that word, you stand on that promise, no matter how long it takes. And remember, there, God reminded him of the word that he gave him 40 years earlier, and he's still on that word. Right. Look at this over in Joshua chapter 3, in, in uh, chapter 1. 1, in verse 3. He said this, I promise you what I promised Moses. Right. Whatever you set your foot you will be on what? Land, you will be on the land that I have given you. Right. Yes. So now he's saying, what I told Moses, remember you received that word? Let me remind you. This is what God's spirit does, or even when we come together, we're reminded of what God said. Yes. Now, why does God remind us of his word? He's given us his word. Mm -hmm. So we would focus on his promise and see his promise come to pass mm -hmm. in our lives. So the one major key of getting a victory in your life or overcoming every battle is remembering what God said. Why is that important? Because in life, as you're going through life, there's so many things that will try to That's shake right. you. That's right. You could be looking at your problems, yes. and the more you look at your problems and the more you talk about your problems, the bigger your problems mm -hmm. get. What we need to do if we're gonna get victory I need to, we need to go right back to the word. Mm -hmm. What did God originally tell me? And hold on to that yes, word. Yes, yes. Man, that's powerful. And then he goes on even here in verse 5. He said this. He says that what? No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. Wow. Come on, you better get that. He says, for I will be with you as long as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. So when God gives you a word, you need to understand that I don't care what you're going through, what wilderness experience you may have, what trials you may experience, receive the word. You got you to accept that word. You got to accept that word and you got to stand on that word and know that God will not abandon you through whatever trials or storms that you're going through. And that, you know what he's saying is he won't abandon you or fail you. This is why you can't fail because God can't fail. That's right. He says, I won't fail you. So if you're trusting in me, you're good. You got a victory. Mm. And I won't leave you alone. I'm going to be with you. And since I'm with you, who can come against you? Yes. So we need to stand. How do we get God be with us? We hold on to oh. the promises of God. Mm. It's going to work out fine. It's not going to end in failure. It's going to end in victory. Mm. So the first point is, let's get a word from, from God. The That's the first key. Yes. What scripture are you standing on? Now let's go to key number two. Well, key number two is very important, is that after you get that word from God, you have to believe in the word. You can get a word, right. 
but you have to believe the word, right? If God said it, then what? I believe it and that settles it. I'm not questioning that word. I'm standing on that word. I, and, and, it, and when God says it, it's settled. I'm not turning back from the word that God, I don't care what happens, what I go through, I'm going to believe the word that God gave. Yeah, I remember, I remember when, um, when my both daughters were sick in yeah. the hospital and, and, and one had cancer mm. and I had my second baby born at Loma Linda yeah. Hospital and, and both of my daughters are in, 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 in the hospital. And Lisa's ready to deliver our second daughter, really. Mm -hmm. and, our, and our second daughter, we have to have an emergency C-section. And they're, they're telling me, the doctors are telling me. And I remember the doctor that met me in, in the hallway. And I was walking around my Bible. Mm -hmm. And I, she told me, it looks like that's not working for you. So she was saying that looks like God thing and that Bible's not mm. working for you. And when she said that, I had to stop her in her tracks. I go, it's not over. And God's going to have the last word. He's the beginning. He's the alpha and the omega. He's going to have the last word in this. Yeah. So we'll see if it's working or not. And I remember seeing my little daughter, the newborn that was just born with this heart condition. Right. And I would peek through the NICU uh, window and I would see my little baby daughter. She was just born with all kinds of tubes in her. And they would have to do open heart surgery mm. on her just a few days after she was born. And they, were, they weren't guaranteeing me anything. We weren't, we're not sure 100% she's going to make it, but she needs a surgery or for sure she'll die. But I also had another daughter that had leukemia and had cancer. She was four years old. So I have a newborn baby and another one of four years old. And, and I remember going home because when you're going through a battle, you need a word from God to get through it. Like, God, what are you saying? And, and I really didn't know what to pray for right. because I was I was overwhelmed with both of my daughters just think about it I was a youth pastor at the time and and both of my daughters are in the same hospital mm. with almost like a death sentence over them and there's a possibility that I would come out of that hospital with no kids I mean that's what the enemy wanted me right. to focus on so I remember going home I left Lisa at the at the hospital and I went home and when I went home all I could do, I didn't even have a long prayer right. in me. You know, I didn't have like an intercessory prayer in me. I would pray for, I didn't, I didn't, have, I didn't even have a five-minute prayer in me. I was just yeah. overwhelmed right. with all the bad news that I right. heard. And I, this is what I did. I knelt down by my bed, and I said a two-second prayer. And he said, what was your prayer? And I said this, God, I put my daughters in your hands. Mm -hmm. There's no better hands to put them in. I trust you. And that was it. I got up and that was it. No more conversation. But this is what happened. I got a word from God. Yes. There was a team that was praying in Los Angeles and I never knew these people, but they heard about my, the, the trial I was going mm -hmm. through and they prayed. Right. And while they were praying, God spoke to them in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And they called my mother because my mother knew um, some, some, someone that was part of that prayer team. And they called my mother and they said, we have a word from God for your son. Hmm. And this was the word that they said. And they said was, this is what they said. Didn't your son give his daughters to me? He doesn't need to worry. They're in my hands. Amen. So the Amen. exact words yeah. I prayed two seconds right. came, came back, back to me and God was verifying, wow. no worry, it's going to turn out victorious, mm. it's going to turn out fine. And within a month period of time, huh. both of my daughters, one of them went in complete remission, never went, cancer left, Amen. never came back. The other yeah. one got a surgery, yeah. came home and we got victory. Man, praise but, God. But what got me through that was this word. word. So now when I got that word, I was able to get through that season in yes. faith and not be overwhelmed. Now, whatever you're going through, there's a word from God. Sometimes he'll speak that way, yeah. or sometimes he'll just, you're reading the word and just something will pop, pop up. out. Man, so now I needed to believe that word. Yeah, so let's yes. do our key number two. Well, let's go. As we continue to look at key number two, you need to understand this, that when God gives a word, you believe the word, it will come to pass because what? We believe what God said. Right. We got to believe what God said. We cannot question God. If God says it, again, we said earlier, that settles it, it will come to pass. 
there's a scripture that supports that is over in Romans 4.17. Mm -hmm. Romans 4.17, it says, this is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you what? A father of many nations. This happened but because Abraham what? Believed God. In the God who brings what? The dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. And so it's key that once we get a word and we believe that word, we have to then, we have to speak that word. We have to speak that word, right? Because what we believe in, we speak. So we get a word, we believe the word, and a part of believing that word is speaking what that word is saying. So remember that the scripture is saying here, it happened. And so this is another uh, verse mm -hmm. about Abraham. It's not, actually, yeah. Abraham, he was an older gentleman, well, 100 years old. Right. And, and God promised him that he'd have a, he'd have a lot, a lot of kids. Of and at, at 100 years old, he didn't have any kids. Yeah. But right at 100, his <laughs> wife gets pregnant, which is crazy. Miracle. Right, that's miracle. a miracle. <laughs> He, he got a word earlier, but it didn't happen until it was a hundred. Until was, she was ninety-nine, 99 he was hundred. Yeah. And, and the idea is, after Abraham did his best to make that word happen, God says, "You're done. Let me show you what I can do." So when you're in a place that you feel like you're done, mm. there's no hope. God says, "That's where. That's what I specialize in." If you feel like it's hopeless, the doctor said no. Right. It looks like life is telling you no. Mm -hmm. You've already tried everything that you can try and it's still not working out. It's still not over. It happened. Now I want you to get this. Sarah gets pregnant and has a baby. Yeah, at, at 99. 99 years yeah, old. When was the last time you seen a 90-year-old grandma with, that was pregnant? Yeah, I mean, how did Abraham, where did his excitement come from? He had to be... Uh, huh? well, we don't have to get into oh, all okay. that stuff. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, I'm sorry. It's a miracle. It yeah, was a miracle. it's a miracle. It was a miracle. Okay. <laughs> but the idea here is that at 99 years old, she's pregnant. Yeah. Imagine what everybody else was saying in the neighborhood. Right. Sarah is pregnant right. at 99 years old. And the scripture says <laughs> it happened <laughs> because Abraham believed Believe. what God said. And mm. this is why it'll happen for you. Yes. Because you believe what God said. Yes. The reason we're in this church. Right. This building right here. That's right. We went into this building with no money in our pockets. Like no money. And I'm negotiating an $8 million building with no money. The church has no credit. Yeah. But it happened. We're in here, over 2,000 seat auditorium. We have a 120,000 square foot building. Uh, it's a beautiful temple for God. It happened because we believe uh, what God yes. said. My girls were yes. healed because we believe what God said. Mm. And this is what we're asking you. What, are, what trial are you going through that you need to believe right now mm. in what God said? And God says, if you believe what I say, yes. it will happen just like it happened for Abraham and Moses and Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. So now I want to ask you a question. How do we know that, how do we know that someone believes? How do we know that someone believes? Well, I, I, I wrote here that what we believe, we obey. What we believe, we obey. So when we say we believe something, then we follow that. We mm. obey that. Right. Right? If we, we, so being, being what? Being faithful is the same as being loyal and obedient. Right. We have to have faith on that word. We have to obey that word. We have to follow that word. We must be, and, and what's it, but I, I wanted to make another point that's very important that, uh, and, and, and I'm going to expound on that a little bit more, but I, want to, I just want to say this. Over in Numbers 13, 30, there was a scripture that we put up. It says, but Caleb, one of the things that Caleb tried to do, he tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. He says, let's go at once and take the land. He said, what, well, we can certainly conquer it. So he had to speak it, and then he had to act on it. Right, yeah, two, two keys, right? He had to speak on it, and he had to act on it. And it's important that when you get a word from God, not everybody's going to be in agreement with your word. Not everybody's going to believe that God can bring you out of whatever it is you might be going through. So you have to make sure that you get rid of the naysayers. You got to make sure that you connect yourself to people that are going to support you and let you know and encourage you on the word that you're standing on. Right, and, and that's why it's called a fight of faith. Because <laughs> usually when you're believing for something, there's not too many people that actually <laughs> is going to happen. Because what you're believing for is a miracle. 
So what we believe, this is how we know we believe. Number one, what we believe, we speak. We speak. And then what we believe, we, we obey. obey. There's two keys yeah. how we know someone believes. Because, see, once you stop talking about it, we already know you got defeated. You got defeated. Because what, whatever in your heart comes out of your mouth. Right. So if you started out speaking the vision of God, speaking the word of God, speaking that we're going to do this business, I'm going to do this ministry, we're going to change the world. I want to know, I'll know if you still have faith, five years later, you're still speaking it. Mm, that's two, right. Or two months later, you're still speaking that's it right. for some people. Yeah. Two weeks later, you're still speaking it. Yeah. Because they're, they're, you know, talk, talk is really but, important. They say talk is cheap, but I know this. <laughs> That talk is cheap without obeying, but, right. but, but the idea is if you get a word from God, you got to keep speaking, speaking that That's right. word. That's right. And when, you, when you're speaking in faith, you know why you're speaking? You're speaking with an I can mentality. Yes, that's right. Like I'm certain. I'm certain we can conquer yes. this land. Yes. But the question is, why did Ca how did Caleb get that kind of certainty? Where did he get Man. it from? Man, well, you know what? Caleb and Joshua... The thing about Caleb and Joshua, and as we, as we were studying the scriptures, they literally followed God from the outset. Right. They never turned from God. Mm -hmm. As you look through those scriptures in chapter 14, I believe we were going through Joshua, where there were several verses that talked about Caleb and Joshua followed the Lord, followed the Lord, heard the Lord, followed the Lord. It's important if you're going to stay connected to the, to the, to the, 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 the vision or the goals or the, the promise that God made, you got to stay connected to the word of God. Mm, right, yeah, yeah. you got to stay connected to the word. Right, and you, right. asked, you asked me that question and the Holy Spirit just dropped that. He's like, in order for you to, to for, the, for the vision, for the dream, for the goals, for the promise to come to pass, you got to hold on to the word of God. Yeah. And, and that's for everything. Um, I remember even... My wife, you know, about asking, you shall receive. And I, I just stood on that scripture. Yeah, yeah. And, but the thing is, I asked for specifically what I wanted. And what I wanted was this. This is what I asked for. I want a woman that loves God more than I love God. I, I, I want someone to do ministry with. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And give her green eyes. I'll take that too. <laughs> Throw it a couple of prayers. Yeah, we threw that in. Now that wasn't. He said he put that in next, right? That, 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 was that wasn't part. the first part. That wasn't okay. part. I put that in. That's next. important. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I started discounting a lot of people. The, yeah, I threw some the, stuff the, in too. That that, after, that didn't love God. Yeah. After the so spiritual if part. a girl was real pretty with green eyes, and she didn't love God more than I love God, right? Yeah, she yeah, was it out. Happening. Yeah. She was yeah. like out for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and I wasn't gonna compromise that because. God was not going to give me something I didn't even ask for. The right. devil would. Yes. And, and, there, and I want you to get this right before I've learned this in life. Right before you start seeing the promise come to pass, usually there's some, I would say this, um, fake. Oh, yeah. Fake stuff that some comes. Imitation, some imitation. Imitation stuff imitation that comes. Stuff, yeah. And you got to be careful that mm. you, don't, you don't fall for the imitation, imitation yeah. when it doesn't line up with the word. Right. So since God doesn't change his mind, you shouldn't be changing your mind either. Come on. Stop lowering your standards yes. because circumstances telling you lower your standards. Keep your standards up with the word of That's God right. and the faith that God has given yes, you. Yes, yes. Speak the word of God, number one. How do we know you have faith? You speak the word of yes. God. I know someone has faith when they speak, speak the word of God. We can certainly conquer it. Mm -hmm. And number two, we, we obey, obey the, the word, word of God. God. So yes. if you're saying I got faith and you don't obey the word, I know this, you don't have faith. Yes. Because only people that have faith obey God's instructions. We obey God's instructions because we believe if we do it his way, we're going to get his results. People that don't obey God's word, they're thinking, I'll get God's results even if I don't obey. That was an insight. So what he's saying is that believers obey and non-believers disobey. Right. That's how we know someone believes simple? the word. Yeah. So if you, if you believe it, you're, you're, you're indicating someone who is, uh, so if you're obeying, you're indicating someone who they believes. Have faith. Yeah, that you have faith. Right. Hey Amen. That's right. powerful. Let's read Joshua 14, 9. Joshua 14, 9. It says, so that day Moses, he solemnly promised me the land of Canaan on which you were just walking will be your grant of land and that your descendants forever, because what? You wholeheartedly followed the Lord, the key. my God. That word wholeheartedly. So they what? 
wholeheartedly with everything they had, they, with everything that you have, you have to follow the Lord your God. You cannot half-heartedly follow, follow God and expect the promise to come to pass. Right. You got to wholeheartedly follow God and the, and the promise will come to pass. For me, Pastor, I, 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 I was sharing with you uh, earlier, we were talking and God gave me a vision, a, a, a promise. I think I was in middle school. He says that you're going to be ministering to thousands of people. Uh, it was a dream. He showed me this years and years ago. And I, I accepted my call into ministry probably in my late uh, 20s when I accepted the call into ministry. I was, I was working as an electrician. I was, I was in the trade doing that for about 20 years. But even while I was an electrician, I knew that that was not my livelihood forever. I was not going to retire as an electrician because God made me a promise that I would be in ministry full time and serving him. I, I didn't have a degree in, edu, in, in spiritual. I hadn't been to no schools. I hadn't been licensed. I hadn't been ordained. None of that. But God, all I knew is that God made a promise that I would be doing ministry. I had, I had my own challenges. I, I used to be afraid to read in front of people. I used to be afraid to, oh, yeah. to talk in front of people. I had a, a, a spirit that would just take over me of anxiety. And I'm like, how am I going to do this with all of this? But, I, but one of the things that I knew that God made a promise and with the promise, he got me through all of that. And, 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 and I'm here now and God has said, I'm fulfilling the promise that I made to you. What back when you were 13, 14 years old and I'm right now in the promise, getting the opportunity to speak to thousands of people. But what I held on to the promise, I didn't let my eyes obstacles get in the way. I didn't let my wilderness experiences stop me from moving forward and completing what God has called me to do. And following. And following. You know, one, one of the things that kept me on track is I knew how to call on my life yes. as well. And, and I remember when I was in high school, there was a girl, I'm not going to say her name because she might be watching right now. <laughs> But she was a cheerleader come down here to beat school. up. She come down here to try to beat up your yeah, wife. Yeah, that yeah. ain't happening. She was, nah, that would, we, we, we'd be fine. It, it, it'll work out. Maybe she just mentioned her name. No, I'm just kidding. No, but uh, I remember she was really, she was a cheerleader in the high school, really beautiful yeah. girl. And um, I remember that I had like a crush on her. Right. And we were in biology. And, and in biology, right in the middle of the quarter, they say you could switch seats wherever you want to sit, just start, refresh the class. Right. You know what she did? She sat right next to me. She sat right next to me. This girl that I thought was, you know, really beautiful girl. Yeah. She's sitting right next to me, and she's interested in me. Right. She's interested in me. So She's so interested in me, she's invited me over her house after school. So she invites me over her house after school, and she says, it's going to be great. Um, my parents are gone on vacation. It's just going to be us, and we could have fun. That's amazing, man. I have a, I have so she a, told me that. That's crazy. I have a story similar. It's yeah, but like, this is my story yeah, right I know, now. I know, okay. I know. So, like, it just triggers something. I'm not I, telling my, my know, wife no, is no, watching. Tell your my wife watched it. I ain't telling my story. <laughs> okay. You go ahead and tell yours. Okay, so. <laughs> your wife's here. You're good. Yeah, okay. So, I, I, so now, which I knew what she was, she was doing, she was giving me a proposition. Right. And I already knew what she was saying, and I told her, I can't do that. Yeah. And I told her, I can't do that because I'm a Christian. I'm living for God. Right. I got a purpose for mm -hmm. my life. And then she says, what, are you gay? I go, no, I'm not gay. <laughs> I'm sold out for God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Now, no one was saying that crazy stuff. No, not, yeah. But the only reason I said it because God gave me a promise right. that I had a future right. and I was a minister Come on. and me sleeping with that girl was not part right. of me getting to my destination. Yes. What was going to get me to that destination is following God yes. in every detail of my life wholeheartedly. Yes. And I've learned this. If you don't have the faith to obey God, you don't have the faith to have a victory mm -hmm. either. Yes, that's good, man. Pastor, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it could have been the same girl. No, it wasn't. This girl was, yeah. she, saw, she was like, she, she was, was a, nah, she was not a, her. The same one that came at me. I, don't know. I think she only liked me. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Man, crazy, man. I, don't, I don't think so, though. That's not the point. That, <laughs> that's not the point, but if she would have liked me, man. It don't matter. She wasn't my wife. That's yeah, my that's wife, right, wife there. right there. You're getting me off track. <laughs> and my wife's watching right now. Hi, honey. <laughs> Man, let's okay, get to the okay. third point. Let's key, key number three. Key number now. three. Okay. Key number three. <laughs> you're, mess, you're messing me up right now. <laughs> the, the key number three. This is, I think I kind of mentioned key number three is that 
key number three is very important. You got to hold on to the word. Hold on. But hold on to the word or the promise until it comes to pass. You got to hold on to that word or that promise till it comes to pass. Do not abandon the word. And, and over here it says, uh, we will never win a battle by giving up. Most battles are won through endurance. Right. Now, I, when you feel like giving up, this is what happens. If you do give yep. up, you lost. Yeah. Yeah. So just because it's difficult, it doesn't happen in the timing that you want, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Right. A matter of fact, God won't give you a victory mm. until your characters develop enough up. to be able to get that victory or get right. that blessing and not lose your focus. Mm. Yes. Yes. So there's some blessings that God wants to release to you, mm. but you're not ready for it. And in the process of enduring and building character and sticking it right. out is that you get built up into the person that can handle that victory or handle that blessing. Yes. Why hasn't she come yet? You <laughs> still need some work. <laughs> work on you. Right. Relax. Kick back. Just keep on growing. But don't you let go of yes. the vision and don't you let go of the dream mm. because if you do, you lose. So yes. now, what do we need to hold on to? Well, look it. It says right here, we need to hold on to our confession of faith. We got to hold on to our confession of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the realization of things not seen. Faith is having confidence in something that has not happened yet. You got to hold on to that. God made the promise. It hasn't come to pass yet, but you got to hold on by faith that it's going to come to pass. So that means, like Pastor said, you're not going to settle for anything else because you know that what just what the promise is coming to pass, but you just hold on. Look at Hebrews 10, 23 even says this. It says, let us seize and hold tightly what? The confession of our hope without wavering. We cannot be up and down about what we're believing God has promised to us. Right? It says that what? For he who promised is reliable and trustworthy and faithful to his word. One of the beautiful, one of the most beautiful names about Jesus is, it's all through Revelation, that he refers to himself as faithful and true. Faithful. God is faithful and true. That means God is faithful and true to every word that he has ever spoken. He doesn't miss shots. He doesn't file up. He, has, he does not make mistakes. If he said it, he's true to his word. Wow. Come on. Right. And so we need to hold on our confession of faith. Remember, it's not just start speaking it, it's continue speaking it. Mm, there it well, is. Like this, well, the Lord called me to this church, and then next week, the Lord called me out of the church. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't work that way. God's not schizophrenic. Huh. He's not giving you double words. Either you heard the first word from God or the second word was from God, but they right. both can't be from God. That's right. And you can't change your word based on your circumstances. You can't say, well, you know, um, yeah, I know God told us to overcome all the land and right. take over the land that God promised. But the truth is, there's giants in the land. Mm. And if I would have known there was giants in the land, if, there, if I would have known that the walls were sort of for, uh, fortified, fortified yeah. if I would have known that we'd have to actually fight, yeah. we don't even know how to fight. <laughs> right. um, I think probably we need to like go back to where we were. Right. The slave life wasn't so bad. See, the devil will get you talking. Before you start backsliding, you start you backsliding in your talk. talk. Right. And the, the crazy thing is, is not only backsliding with your talk, you're backsliding with mm -hmm. the people you're associating with. You start lowering your conversation. You no longer are talking about vision. You're no longer talking about what God's word says. Now you're talking about problems. You're talking about people. You're talking about your pain. Right. You're talking about your losses. You're talking about nobody loves you. I, I'm getting tired. Mm. I'm ready to quit. That's the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm. And you start saying all the wrong things. And if, you, and if we don't hold on to our confession of faith, we will never see a victory. Mm -hmm. So we need to hold, hold on, on to the word through our oh. confession. Yes, yes. Uh, right here it says, Pastor, that only those with endurance will see the promise come to pass. Right, you got to have endurance. Only those with endurance is going to see the promise come to pass. So looking back and, and not handling your struggles the right way, because what happened? As I said earlier, only two of those 12 tribes literally made it to the promise. What happened to the other 10? They, they literally wanted to go back to Egypt. 
So because they did not hold on to the promise, what happened was they, they wandered around in the wilderness right outside of the promise. God would not even let Caleb and Joshua in until all of those people died off. There was no chance of them even getting in. Why? Because they did not hold on to the word and to the promise that was given. But just think about this. There's millions of people walking around in circles for 40 years. The, the borders of the land and the houses and the riches that God had for them were right there. Yes. But they could not enter. Couldn't enter. And the reason they couldn't enter is because they first never, go key back. number one, they never, never received the word from God. Key number two, they never believed what God said. And key number three, mm. they never held on to what God's word. That's right. Never held on to the word of God or the promises yes. of God. You see, you cannot go into the promise, and I'll tell you what, you can't get into heaven, you can't get into the peace of God, you can't get into the joy of God, you can't get into the freedom of God, right. you can't get into the abundance of God. You can't get into any of the promises of God unless you believe. Yes, so this right. is why everybody had to die. Yes. Only the people that believed stayed alive. stayed alive. All those millions of people, they died because they didn't believe, they didn't believe. and they weren't allowed to enter. Mm, mm, mm. After they all died, 40 years walking around, they all died yes. out there in the wilderness. After 40 years, right. now Joshua and Caleb were allowed to go in because only believers, believers get, get in. in. But let's, let's continue yes. about endurance. Yes. Look at here in uh, Hebrews uh, 10, 36, it says that patient, patient endurance is what you need now so that what you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that God promises. Then. All that he promises. And so Joshua and Caleb held on to the promise after 45 years. They continued to hold on to the promise. 45 years of what? Believing and confessing and following God. 45 years. 45 years. Wow. And while in the wilderness, while in a place of turmoil, while in a, in a place of defeat, while in a place of, of, I mean, they were, the food, there was a food shortage. God literally had to send a mammon from heaven but even in all that, they held on to the promise and to the word of God. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what your challenges are, stand on the, and make a confession uh, uh, to the promises that God offers. Stand on those promises. Stand, you would believe, stand on the confessions, and do what? Follow God. Let's read Joshua 14. Joshua 14, 10 and 12 says what? Now as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and will what? And well as he has promised for all these 45 years since Moses made this promise. Even while Israel wandered in the wilderness, today I'm 85 years old and I'm as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey and I can still travel and fight as well as I could then. So give me the hill country that what the Lord promised me. You remember that as, as what? As the, the, as, as, that as scouts we found what that descendants of Anak living there in great walled towns. Walled towns. Walled towns. I'm sorry, but what? If the Lord is with me, I will drive them out of the land, just as the Lord has said. Wow. So in this story, we see Joshua and Caleb. They get a promise from God. And it's in Numbers 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing Joshua, we're in 14. Yeah. It's 45 years later. Caleb is now 85 years old. Yeah. For 45 mm -hmm. years, this is what Caleb was doing. Mm. He was holding on to the word that God gave him. Yes. He was believing because God gave him a promise that you and your descendants, you will see the land that I'm giving you. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And what that meant was it was going to be a land that, that already had, uh, had vineyards, it had cattle, yes. it had fortified cities, beautiful homes that were already built. He goes, I have a promise for you. Yes. And 85 years, he's 85, 85 years old, 45 old. years later, yeah. this is how Caleb is still speaking. We don't see any diminishing in it. His faith is not diminished. If anything, he's actually stronger than he ever has. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, and God gives us an extreme example of 45 years of someone believing. And I believe he gives us these extreme examples because when you're wait, waiting for four weeks and you're getting frustrated, you could go back to, yeah. you could go to back to Caleb and Joshua. They waited 45, 45 years, years for this dream to come yes. to pass. And we give up so quick. We pray and we want it done in four minutes. Mm -hmm. And God's saying, no, it's going to take a lot more than 
for, it's not that God can't do something instantly because it does happen once in a while, yeah. but God's more concerned in who you're becoming and building your faith right. than just getting you things. Yes. It's who you're yes. becoming he's concerned. Yes. And for 45 years, he was showing he loved God and that he was going to serve God. He was yes. faithful to God. 45 years later, they finally are there. And now Caleb, you know what he's saying? Give me what God, God has, has promised, promised me. Yes. He goes, I'm 85 years old, and I don't even know if it's true, but at least yes. he was saying it. Yes, that's he was right. walking by faith. I'm just as strong as I was mm. when I was 40 years yes. old. I could throw down. I could fight. Give me that land. I don't even care who's in that land. Mm. We will take them that's right. out. That's right. And that's what Caleb was believing because yes. he believed in what God promised him. Yes. And there's nothing that you're facing today that with God you can't overcome. overcome. Whatever right. battle you're in, right. you can overcome. Yeah. And we see later on that they actually walk around Jericho and they blow a trumpet mm -hmm. and, and they walk around seven times and the last day seven more times. They just blow a trumpet and they shout and all the walls come, come down. down. Mm. And what couldn't be uh, conquered by, by armies in that day, they couldn't That's conquer right. that city. God, with a group of people that believed Believe. and were walking with God's word, ended up defeating a town or a city yes. that was undefeatable. Yes. Yes. And what God tells us, shows us these stories, because whatever battle that you're facing or whatever level you're trying to get to, you can overcome, you can overcome. Yes. and you can get through this and yes. you could win the battle that you're in. As a matter of fact, God has called you to win yes. with him. Right. He goes, I'll never leave you. I'll never abandon you. Right. I'll never fail you. Yes. And my, my, when I give you a word, bank on it. Because when I say it, it's going to come to pass. Yes. And it's going to happen That's because right. you believe. Yes. And the biggest thing that we can believe for is salvation. Yes. You know, the Bible talks about that the non-believers couldn't see the promise and they couldn't get the victory. Yes. And non-believers, this is one thing you won't see in heaven, is non-believers. Non now, you're going to see ex-prostitutes, ex-gang members, ex-murderers, ex-everything. Right. But you're going to see ex-non-believers. Yes. But you're going to, this is what's going to be in heaven. A whole bunch of forgiven believers. Yes. God loves you yes. and he's making a way even through the scripture. Yes. Do you know if you believe today and you get this word, whatever you're facing, you're actually making a way for God to intervene in your life and bring victory? It doesn't matter how big your opposition is, you can overcome. Yes. But the most important thing is making sure that you're saved, yes. that you're born again, yes. and that you place your faith in Jesus Christ. You know, God gives you a promise just like they got a promise. He got a promise that whatever land that you touch with your feet, that land will be yours. Yes. Go look at the land and walk yeah. on the land I am mm. giving you. Yes, and, and they had a promise, but God gives us a really big promise. And this is what he says. If you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, that you'll be saved. Yes. That means you'll be made whole, you'll be made complete, you'll be forgiven, you'll receive eternal life, a new yes. beginning a new life and you could have it today yes. and you might be saying pastor but I've done so much wrong things and I don't think I qualify well no one qualifies you don't fix your life and come to God you just come exactly the way you are God loves you yes. and he wants to save you yes. he wants to make you whole maybe tonight could be your first night that you've had a good night's sleep maybe today could be the day that you get set free from the depression and the anxiety you've yes. been in Maybe today's the first day that you allow love to come in your heart. Yeah. You've been so hurt and hard because of the hurt. Yes. And, and you feel like, man, no one loves me. And God says, I do. I love you. And I want to give you the abundant life that I promised you. And the devil's been stealing, killing, yes. destroying. And God says, Are you aren't you tired of that cycle that you've been living in? You don't have to live that way anymore. Yes. And the battle that you're in, you can win, win yes. and you can continue to win and yes. win and win and win and then show others to win. Now, God doesn't want to just save you. He wants to save your family. How do we do this? Receive this word. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ paid the price for all of your sins. That means stop beating yourself up. Jesus was beat up for the yes. wrong you've done. Yes. Stop living under a guilt trip. Yes. You can be free from that. You can be forgiven and then receive forgiveness and then forgive yourself and forgive everybody. Start living a new life. Right now, you can make that choice. Joshua and Caleb heard the message. They believed. They received that word. And they walked in it. Yes. And there was a whole bunch of people that heard the same message but didn't believe. Will you be one of those few that say, yes, I'm tired. I want a new life. I want the eternal life that God offers. You're just a prayer away, a belief away. Say yes to God. He said yes to you already. 
So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and let's pray. You're saying, Pastor, that's me. I want to give my life to yes. Jesus. I'm not sure if I'd die right now, I'd go yes. to heaven. Yes. I feel like I'm overwhelmed in the battle that I'm in and I need some help. Yes. God says, come on, have faith in me. I'll help you. Yes. I'll save you. I'll make you new. I'll yes. give you eternal life. Yes. It could happen now. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I believe. I believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross. To pay the price. To pay the price. For all the wrong I've done. For all the wrong I've done. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. For not giving up on me. For not giving up on me. Today. Today. I open my heart. I open my heart. And I place my faith. And I place my faith. In you, Jesus. In you, Jesus. Your word says. Your word says. It, that if I believe. That if I believe. In my heart. In my heart. And I confess. And I confess. With my mouth. With my mouth. That you rose again from the dead. That you rose again from the dead. And that you're my Lord. And that you're my Lord. You'll save me. You'll save me. Save me, Lord. Save Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Jesus. Set, me free. Set me free. I open my heart, open my heart. and I let, you in. I let you in. Fill me now, Fill me now. With, your Holy Spirit. with your Holy Spirit. I receive, I receive. The, free gift the free gift of eternal life. Of eternal life. Amen. Amen. All right, awesome. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it, I want to just say this. Congratulations. In heaven, they're having a big, huge yes, party for you. The Bible says there's just when one soul just gives their life to the Lord, they have a big angel start partying in heaven because it's the biggest thing you could ever do in your life. Give your life to Jesus. And this is what God's going to do for you. He's going to take your losing streak and now make it into a winning streak. And all you got to do is start believing, hearing the word, believing the word and holding on to the word. And you're going to be okay. Stick it out because God's never given up on you. Don't you give up on him. God bless you. We love you. See you this Friday. It's going to be really good. John Eckert's coming out. Invite your friends and relatives. We're believing that Friday's going to be a night of freedom and deliverance. It's going to be a night of miracles. Bring the hard cases. I think no one could, I don't think anybody, they'll never get saved. Just bring them too. Because I really believe God will speak to them. That Friday night will be their night. Love you guys. God bless you. And remember this. If God's for you, there's no one to come against you. God saying win, win, win in him. Love you. God bless you. Hello, everyone. What a powerful message. And on behalf of the Wayward Outreach, we just want to say we love you. But most importantly, God loves you. And if that word spoke to you today, make sure you help us get this message out by liking, commenting, and sharing this YouTube channel. God bless you all. See you next time.